here it is. It's uh, finally finished. It's the, um, I'm calling it the XO printer. It's, it's basically a scaled up uh, Voron Zero with a cubed enclosure. Um, and I will kind of do a walkthrough here to kind of show you what the uh, features are on this printer. So we'll just go through the basics here. Um, I knew I wanted to have uh, something similar to like a V0, um, one of like smaller Voron printers, but the build size of like 150, I think is what it is, it's, it's really small. I uh, want something a little bigger than that, something a little more usable, so that's why I end up um, building this printer, which is a 220 by 220 uh, build size, and that's what this PEI sheet is, it's just a standard 220 by 220 from some other printer, and it, it's right off the shelf, works great. Um, I chose the motion system for the V0. Uh, actually, this is um, Tiny M motion system, which is a V0 that's scaled up to use um, 20 by 20 extrusions instead of the 15 by 15. So it's it's a little bigger, a little more robust, um, and works great with this size uh, build sheet. Probably even go a little bigger. Um, but right now, that's all. This is is 220 by 220. Um, like the V0 motion system, just like how um, the crossbar or the x-axis, it kind of rests right on the on the sides of the uh, of the x x rails there. So it's it's very compact. The belts are within the the area of the rail or the I'm sorry the extrusion. So they're right up against the uh, side panels there. And then I'm just using a regular. Um, the V0 tool head that's been modified a little bit, it's been extended uh, to use the Rapido hot end. So just the sides are extended down a little bit. And also I made the front a little thicker so that it will fit a 10 millimeter fan instead of a seven, seven millimeter fan, which is what the stock uh, V0 tool head uses. Everything else um, pretty much scaled up uh, uh, <clears throat> Tiny M or V0. So we've got the, the motors in the back with the tensioners right here, tension knobs, which work really great. And then also with the way this setup is, um, all the motors are outside of the build area. So um, you don't have to worry about overheating or cooling uh, your your stepper motors, which I've never actually had an issue, but you know, hey, that's something to think about. Uh, the Z axis uh, is lifted a lot of the design from the Snake Oil XY and then I modified uh, the carriage here. These are MGN9s. Basically all the rails here are MGN9. But these are MGM9s on a belted system. This piece up here is pretty much lifted from a Voron 2.4. And then it goes, the belts go down through the bottom here and then I have my motors at the bottom. And these are the geared motors. So you don't need to build a geared box um, with, with gears and all that stuff. You just get the stepper motor that's already geared down five to one and it works great. Uh, these panels are, got them from Ken, Send Cut Send, these are aluminum composite panels, uh, silver on the bottom and the back, and just white panels for the sides. Um, looks pretty good. And originally I did have um, these hard fastened, uh, that's why these holes are here. But what I found out is when you directly fasten the panels to the frame, even if you have felt in there, which I do, I've got like felt it's really freaking loud. Um, it just, the whole thing acts as like a speaker box and resonates and the printer's really loud. Um, so I just basically, I removed the fasteners and I've got these little clips now like typical Voron stuff and that's probably why they do it is to keep the noise down. Uh, so that works pretty well too. Uh, running just a standard umbilical here, no no uh, drag change and the way, the way this is designed to come out on the side is that this will kind of coil up on itself when when that moves forward and backwards and it it's got great clearance works really well really happy with the way this turned out um, also using the clicky probe which is just stuck to the back there um, I was also using the standard Voron Z pin probe um, that is this guy right here and uh, it was on the back of the machine uh, basically over here but one thing I ran into is that um, this pin, uh, if you don't notch it, which is kind of hard to do if you don't have the right tools to keep it in place, what, what happens is when 
you um, when you probe the pin, if there's any filament on the nozzle and it's hot, it'll stick to this pin and then it'll probe, it'll catch a reading and then when it lifts off, it lifts this pin out and then drops it somewhere on the printer and then the next time it comes back it's it's gonna smash up it's gonna crash against the bed because the pins the pins not there so I just took it out and I'm just using the um, clicky probe right now and it works great uh, just set the offset one time and it works whether I use uh, this PEI plate and I also I have another um, flex plate down here where I just use some some like standard build surface it's like a little finer finer pattern it just depends on what you want you know this one I think is smooth and textured on both sides on my github version I just I've slightly updated the size of the frame I basically made the the um, the front to back extrusions 10 millimeters longer to make it a little easier to add accessories to the back just to give you a little bit more room I mean it works the way it is now but it's it's pretty tight uh, so um, the new model has basically 10 millimeters more depth to allow for, I guess, more stuff if you want to put on the back or a little more clearance for stuff like that. So um, I'll show you the back here in a minute with the electronics. I'll get this thing turned around. So here we have the back of the machine. And as you can see the, the umbilical and the... The PTFE tube just come out this little fitting that I made. It's basically two two fittings, one on the inside, one on the outside, and it's just a friction fit there. And then the as everything comes in here, I'm running a um, octopus, uh, just standard octopus. That's behind. I made this shroud for the the fans, and these work really great, obviously for cooling. And I found out in Clipper you can set the speed, so. I don't have them running at 100% because it'd be really loud, so they're probably running at, I think, 50% right now, and they seem to be doing just great. Um, and then here's my Pi with a similar fan header that I think I got on Amazon or something. And this little guy is also, you can program it to basically ramp up as the Pi gets hotter or just have it static on 25 or 50% or something like that. Um, looks pretty tidy. The power supply is underneath. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but... There's the power supply, and you can see one of the geared motors back there. Um, so the three Z motors are on the bottom, power supply is on the bottom, and then all the other electronics are right here on the back panel. Keeps it a little cleaner. Uh, so, and then here's my exhaust uh, filter system. So uh, I have the grill on the the other side, the back side here, or. Kind of looking back straight down and I just sort of stuffed that with filter media carbon filters and it's in this box here with this uh, 180 millimeter fan on the bottom and this is uh, hooked up to one of the fan headers on the octopus so I can control that in clipper uh, manually manually set the exhaust which I found out once this chamber heats up I can get it to heat to about to 40 C pretty pretty reliable I mean it gets up there pretty in a pretty good amount of time and then I just have to set the exhaust fan um, to keep it from getting much more I get it's about 45 or so but um, it'll keep climbing up even hotter and then I just set the fan to you know 60% or 70% to kind of regulate that temperature and it works pretty well um, so it seems to print ABS really well like that and uh, also ASA so uh, there's the back pretty clean nothing super crazy just your basic uh, BTT octopus and a pie and then I've also got this MOSFET here for uh, heating the bed so that's pretty much it and there's my dog what's up dog so here's just a quick demo of um, typical um, print uh, it'll be homing using the, um, the clicky probe and also doing a three-point bed level uh, before it starts the print. So this is uh, how that works. It is using sensorless homing, which is working great. Say at least on X and Y, I'm using sensorless homing, using the probe for the Z. Just at the basic home, and now it'll go into the three point uh, bed level. So 
Athletic, it's making three passes. I haven't printed in a few days, so usually it does two passes and it's good. And does the first perch line. And with that cookie probe, it's pretty much spot on, perfect every time. I don't need to adjust or anything, works great. So obviously this is not ABS since I've got everything opened up. I just I loaded up some PLA. This is about, <clears throat> I think it's a hundred millimeters a second. And I set everything to, the uh, walls might be 90. But prints really good at 100. I've, I've actually got it tuned pretty well up to about 150. Uh, <clears throat> so working great. So here's just a sample of um, a 30 millimeter uh, cube that I printed on, on the machine here. Try to get to focus. Um, see the here's the bottom on the PEI. It has that really nice kind of texture. And then the uh, walls came out really good. See, get it in the light to see. Barely see any, any uh, horizontal lines. And this cube was printed at about 100 millimeters a second. 